spending time with her husband, friends, family, including her 12 grandchildren. In her spare time, she connects and celebrates with the women involved in motorsports, taking you behind the wall about their journey of life, racing, and how they juggle everything to make it all work. Welcome to Racing Girls Rock Podcast. Strap in, window nets up, the pedals are down, and when the green flag drops, we go. Everyone, this is Melinda Russell with Racing Girls Rock Podcast, and we are going to have a fun conversation today with Sasha. Sasha was the social media coordinator for the Big Machine Music City Grand Prix. Did I say that right? You sure did. Okay. Um, Sasha and I have just recently connected, but I um, I was at the, the race, the Indy race, and attended some events around the Indy race, and it was so fun. It was hot, but it was so fun. And so when I saw that she was the social media coordinator for this, I knew I had to talk to her and find out what did it take to make that event such a big success? You know, she was a part of it, and so we're going to talk to her, but first, Sasha, Tell me a little bit about yourself, your family, your pets, whatever you're comfortable sharing. Absolutely. Well, it's nice to meet you guys. Thank you so much, Melinda, for having me. I'm Sasha. I live here in Nashville, and I have been in the car business for quite some time now. So I started out in luxury cars with Mercedes, Porsche, coming back to Mercedes. So this whole racing side is a, is a new, um, you know, thing for me. I'd never been to a race until August. So my first IndyCar race, first race period. Um, I have two little girls, um, 13 and 11. So we reside here in Nashville and, you know, we have a lot of fun together. They stay busy with sports and schools. So, um, yeah, that's kind of, kind of me. Okay. You don't look old enough to have girls 13 and 11. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> for sure. So, you know, this was the first time this happened in Nashville. And I know those things don't happen overnight. So tell me what you know about how that all came about. And then what was your part in getting the word out and getting the people there? So it was, I mean, it was a huge success. How did that all come together? Yes. Yeah, so this race was actually years and years in the making. And my boyfriend at the time right now, he is the COO of the race. So he has helped kind of process this whole thing and piece it together. So it has been probably five years in the making. And this time last year, last August, September, Roger Pinsky flew up to Nashville. They had a meeting at Nissan Stadium and, you know, they pitched the whole race to him and, you know, so many people were involved. It, you know, you had to, the Titans had to be on board first before this race could actually happen. I think a lot of people were thinking, oh, the city has to be on board or all of that. It's actually the Titans because we needed to use their property, you know, for the paddock for, you know, to have the most footprint in Nashville. So having them on board was the first step and they were on board. So we got Roger Pinsky here. He was here and, and his words were, let's go racing. And he was in. So from that moment, from August on, we have been planning and doing sponsored ads and marketing and throwing social media out and doing videos. And, and you know, we didn't have a ton to work with. A lot of people um, in the past in other races, you know, they've had races. So this was new to us and trying to piece, you know, some other, other events and tracks and, and getting what we could to make this a huge event for Nashville. Um, so it, it's worked from the ground up from zero followers to we've got 10,000 followers now on Instagram. So it's been a huge success. So Sasha, you and I both use social media in a big way. Yes. You know, you used it to grow a following, to get people to come to the race, to tell them about what was happening and get them excited about it. I use it to grow the IWMA and, and reach out to women. So, you know, what other kinds of things, you know, did you do in the marketing part? I know you were part of social media, but they had to do a lot of different things to have the crowd they had. So what do you think they did that made that race such a success? I think it was the team. The team was absolutely incredible on every aspect from operations to marketing to the sales team. The guys in the sales office are absolutely amazing they actually came from the titans and they are so great 
Um, we also did a lot of events that those sales guys were at. So there's Cars and Coffee here in Nashville. So they were at those for months, probably starting last October, November. Um, so every month, so you get the hype up going to those. They were showing up at Preds games, at Titans games. And we had the IndyCar um, car that, you know, they would show and everybody loved to take pictures and, uh -huh. and you know, kind of get that hype up not just the social side, but the community side as well. Um, we also did a lot of community service work with the, uh, the Martha O'Brien Center, Vandy, um, and partnered with them, Walk, Walk Bike Nashville. Um, so that kind of helped up that vibe as well and get everybody excited about it. Yeah, absolutely. And if you've got the Titans behind you, you know, that's the first step. And then the city, and then of course, Roger Penske, how could you lose when, when he- yeah, absolutely. When he's saying, yeah, let's do it. Absolutely. But um, so had you ever been to an indie race before? I had never been to an indie race. And you know, it's so funny. I love cars, obviously been in the car business for a while. And um, I had never been to a race, period. I've never been to a NASCAR race. I've never been to an indie race, Formula One, nothing. But I've been to tracks and drove exotic cars. Uh, I've been to the Porsche track in Atlanta. So seeing that all come to life was just so surreal for me. It was just a moment. I was like, oh my gosh. You know, the GT race was, was one of my favorites. Um, just because I'd worked with those exotic cars uh -huh. in the past. Yeah. So I was like, oh, this is so amazing. So yeah, it was my first one and it was epic. I was so excited. I'm like, I want to go to the next one. When's the next one? I know. So my husband and I had not been to an indie race ever either. And I'm, you know, I'm big into the racing, but NASCAR is really, you know, yes. what I know most, but you know, I'm learning a lot more about the drag racing and the, and, and the sprint cars and everything. And so IndyCar was kind of, you know, on the back burner for me, because there's really not very many women involved in IndyCar as far as drivers and, and that. And so, you know, there's just wasn't that much um, connections that I had, but I went to the event, the women's event that was on Friday. I met Beth Peretta, which yes. has the women's team. She's amazing. In fact, she's going to be on my podcast here coming up. And, mm -hmm. and so after being at that race, it's so different in so many ways from NASCAR that it's just a whole new experience. And then those trucks, we oh. love, oh my gosh, we <laughs> love fun. those trucks that did the corners on two wheels and then they yes. jumped yes. over the ramp. And yeah, my husband actually got some of that on video and that was, we absolutely love those trucks. So it was a great weekend. I mean, yes, it was super hot, but it's August in Nashville. What do you expect? And it's, it's exactly what it should have been. It's exactly what a race weekend should be like. And we just had so much fun. So tell me, now, what's what's the plans moving forward? What what's going to happen? Is is this the only race? Are we going to get to come again? Do you know what the plans are? The plans are it is actually coming again. So we're already setting up for 2022 to be the first weekend again in August. So I think it's the fifth through the seventh, and we are planning on having this every year. So hopefully, this is a new event for Nashville. Um, and we're excited that, you know, it's going to stay here and the fans are excited. We've had people already reaching out on social media asking, when can we buy tickets? What's up? When's, who's going to be the lineup? And, and everybody's excited for it because they had such a good time. And I'm so, you know, happy that you guys had a great time too and expecting to come back. Oh yeah, we'll be back for sure because, um, you know, it's not that far to come and love Nashville. I, I told you before we recorded, I was there when I was about 12 years old, just, you know, a couple of years ago, haha. -ha. But, um, you know, back when the Ryman was still the Ryman and, yes. and um, I can't, I won't even tell you who the singer was I went to see because she's long gone and you wouldn't have even known who she was. So, you know, but, <laughs> but we went downtown, we stayed downtown, we found some great places to eat. The shopping was amazing. My husband said there has to be at least 50 bachelorette parties here. Oh, and I, yes. if, if there was one, there was a hundred of them. I, was, I swear, oh, yes. you know, but um, wow. The whole experience that Nashville brought, I think, you know, I mean, a lot of other towns have great, you know, things to do and see and whatever, but the fact that the race was downtown and I could look out my window at the Holiday Inn and see him practice and qualify going across the bridge. That's that was amazing. so cool. 
Yeah, I know. It's so cool. I think the coolest thing for me too was seeing them go over the bridge just because it's just so busy in downtown and just knowing that they're in the middle of downtown Nashville. I mean, a lot of people that I had talked to and, and family or, you know, that were outside that live in Kentucky, they were like, so is this at a track? Like we're, we don't, I'm like, no, no, no. This is through the, you know, downtown, not the middle of Broadway, but yeah. you know, it was on stadium through KBB and right. it was incredible to actually see it come together and see it actually happen. Well, and you know, I was sitting there in the grandstand, so I think I was at turn 10 or 11, I'm not sure, but it's, but it was the corner where the big wreck happened, and so we had all the action right there, but as before the race, I was sitting there looking around at all the things that had to be done for me to have that experience. They had to bring bleachers in. There was all that fencing everywhere there was fence I don't know how many miles of fencing there was you know there were the big screen tv so that we could see other parts of the track of course the concessions were there for the stadium which was so nice because you had those concession areas that were already built in for you but you know just just the logistics of all the things that had to come together like that kind of thing and then I walked over to where all the food vendors were Oh my gosh, that was amazing <laughs> as well. Yeah. And then all the, you know, uh, the the trailers with all the shirts and hats and everything. And um, it was just so well done. And considering that it was the first one, um, yeah. you know, I've been to a lot of races and it was really well thought out. It was well planned. And, and yeah, you had to walk a little bit, but, you know, we're on a road course, not an oval through downtown. Yes. It was just amazing. Kudos to all the people that put it together. Well, thank it was you. So great. We appreciate that. There was a lot of hard work and we were there on site for a week. There were people even there, you know, longer than that. So I stayed on site in operations. Um, we were in an RV that we had a room as well. So we could all kind of go in there and cool off a little bit. Um, and they, I mean, they were working nonstop. There was nights we were up till 2 a.m. and we would get back up at 6 a.m. and start all over again, cutting, mm -hmm. you know, things or weeds or whatever we thought was just any little tiny little detail that needed to be fixed. And, I, you know, I was willing to help them. And, and I honestly can't take the credit for everything with social. I had the sweetest girl, Molly, who helped me um, that was an intern and she went to Middle Tennessee uh, State University. So she helped me. So it was just the two of us covering that, you know, whole area of the race. And we jumped in at night too, when there wasn't a lot going on and we would help the operations team. And everybody was just such a big part of helping. Hey, what, what do you need? What can we do? And, you know, I had even guys when we were busy or stuck at a concert or whatnot, you know, getting content that were like, Hey, the, you know, GT's on track or Indy's on track doing qualifying or practicing. Do you want a video? Like, Absolutely. So everybody was great. And the staff, I mean, killed it. Everybody was so awesome to work with. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I, I talk to track owners and promoters and drivers and all different kinds of women that do all different kinds of things. But, you know, the one thing is that people who come to a race don't always think about what it takes to put it together. And it's one thing to go to my local track on a Friday night, week after week. They're in a rhythm. They know every week what they need to do, you know, et cetera. But to put on an event the size of that yes. and the area that it covered yes. for the first time, you know, even the parking and everything I thought was just, it was top notch. And I just, yes. I'm so excited that, yes, I'm glad to hear we're coming back. And yes, when can I buy my tickets? Yes. And so now I've got a little, little in now with you, Sasha. So I know when that's going to be happening. Absolutely. Um, what do they have anything special already planned for for next year or are we just getting started with it we're kind of just getting started everybody's finally starting to get some sleep and kind of get back and everything and you know getting the grandstands down and you know clean up and and all of that's done but it, it took process and time to do those the last few weeks i guess we're about three weeks out um but we're hoping for a bigger and better event, you know, more fan experience in the fan zone, maybe more food, food trucks. And we had a ton of variety. Did. Uh, the military 
really did an amazing job on Friday for Freedom Friday. So everybody loved them. I know the stadium trucks were a huge hit. So I'm uh -huh. hoping to see them back again. Um, love GT. Obviously, Indy will be there. Trans Am. Um, we had a lot of vintage Indy, you know, yeah. friends that, that came out. They loved that. So I'm hoping just for bigger, better. We, um, you know, never know what the artists could have some, you know, surprises. Yeah. Uh, but we had a lot of interest in since the race ended of, hey, I think I want to do this next year. Like, uh -huh. tell me the date. So I think it'll be bigger and better every year. I mean, Nashville knows how to throw an ultimate party. And, and the guys that are behind this, they they can do it. So, and they yeah. really proved them. Up. And the entire staff did too, so. Well, you know, it's interesting that Nashville has really gotten to be on the map this year with racing because they had the NASCAR was there. Then yes. the SRX series was there. And then IndyCar was there. And so for, for people in that area, you know, they had lots of choices and opportunities to see three different kinds of racing all right there close. And that can't hurt, but just encourage people to come out more. And, the, and then when they see what that, those events were all about, if they didn't go, they're more likely going to come back and and be like I missed it last year I'm not missing it this I year, come. right <laughs> absolutely and you know it's funny I had this video that I will not stop raving about it's um the media company um that did GT's video they did it you know a recap of the whole week and it's just like oh it gave me chills and, and the video guys that also worked with us that they covered more than any cars and, and I posted both of those and a lot of the fans or, you know, they got shared and people were like, I didn't even know this is going on. Like I want to come or I didn't get to come this year due to whatever reason. And I'm yeah. definitely coming next year. So that's been incredible to see that response as well. Oh yeah. I'd love to see those videos and share them for you because I, I just think people, people just were not always aware of what's happening, you know, and, and with everything that's going on in the world around us, if we get focused on wrong things, then we're not watching the fun things that are happening. And so we need to need to focus yeah. on those more than the, absolutely more than the stay positive and, and try to have fun and optimistic. So it's been it's been great. So, um, you know, I'm excited for, for years to come. Yeah, I am. I am, too. So as far as, uh, you know, you're involved in motorsports now, whether you want to be or not, you've kind of <laughs> landed there. Right. And so. Um, what do you what do you see for women like were there a lot of women that were involved in getting this put together or was it mostly just you and Molly most of the rest were guys kind of tell me a little bit about that yeah so Molly and I did strictly just the social now she did help with communications in the office um before the race so she was helping more the marketing side and sponsorships and and she's helping a lot more with that right now as well um but there was a lot of women behind this team. So our club RPM, which was an exclusive ticket in the bridge building, um, two or three women put that on. They did all the events for that. Um, Liz Allison had a huge part mm -hmm. in, you know, sponsorships. I know she was at the event that you were at. Um, and a, our operations manager was a woman. So there was a lot of women that kind of pieced this together on in every aspect of certain departments, there was a woman or two or three or multiple, our sales team, um, and not even just our, you know, Music City Grand Prix team. When I was there at the race and even in Winter Circle, there was a lot of women from IndyCar. So I know I wasn't really familiar with that. And I know, you know, we were talking about the NASCAR side, having so many more women and drivers and, and such, but there was a lot of women in marketing and um, a lot of women in the pits. And it, it was incredible to see that and see yeah. kind of them running it. And it was awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. And that, that's the thing I, you know, my goal is before next year to get connected to some of those so we can do some on-site interviews, do some things, you know, with those women, because that would be, that would be so fun to, to have something to go, you know, to meet them and, and find out more about what they're doing, because, you know, it, women are the fastest growing demographic in, in motorsports, both in the grandstands and involved with teams and on the track and behind the scenes too. And so, um, you know, it's just fun for me to meet all of you guys who are new to it and some are been around forever. And, and it's just fun that we can put our little stamp, you know, our little feminine touch sometimes 
on a sport that typically has been ran by men and, and, you know, drivers were men. And now we're trying to kind of break into that a little bit, which is fun. Yes. I love that. I love it so much. It, it was great. And it was great to see. And everybody was so friendly. I think it was just kind of surreal for me to be there and, you know, whether it was women, men, they were, you know, everybody was so nice and friendly, but I did meet a few women from the marketing side, um, from IndyCar that were just amazing and over the top and super helpful. So that was great. Yeah, that's awesome. And those connections are always good because you want to be working with them again for next year. So I, I'm excited about that. I'm, I'm already looking forward to it. And I've already got my 2022 calendar that I'm starting to pencil in some dates that I know I want to be certain places. So I'm going to put that on my calendar for sure. Good. So, so Sasha, um, I, you know, I don't really have any more questions for you, but is there anything that I haven't asked you about, about your experience working with um, this group to put the race on, to do the social media, you know, anything that you are like, oh, next, next year, or we need to do this differently or, or anything that I haven't asked you about? I don't think so. I will give kind of my feedback on what I thought. Um, Molly and I definitely think we needed a, another set of us, maybe one or two more of us to kind of cover um, and maybe keep that specific person in that area, you know, the whole time or switch out just for when we get caught up. You and I were talking about when the track's hot. You can't take your golf cart over when the track's hot. So there was a lot of times we were running over the, the bridge to get over to the, you know, the paddock or whatnot. So maybe having you know, a little bit more help would be great, but obviously we both killed it and worked super hard and, and ran around crazy taking pictures and videos. And, um, I do, Molly and I had talked about it, um, but we never kind of got to it because we got so busy. We would love to have maybe interacted with the drivers more or interacted. We did interact with the fans and took a few pictures of fans and especially children. We wanted to, to up that demographic. I think a lot of people had thought, oh, this is a race. Like, no woman's going to want to be here. No child's going to want to be here. It's just like a race. So, and, and it wasn't just that it was an experience. There was right. music, there was food, it was a festival. And so many people had fun. We wanted to capture that entire demographic yeah. and so many children were there. They loved the cars. They yes. loved the stadium trucks. They, there was like a unicorn ice cream food truck and, uh -huh. And I mean, they loved it. Yeah. So that was fun to see and capture. Um, we did kind of stalk Connor Daly a lot. He was he was fun. He was very active on Instagram. I hate yes. to say he's like my favorite driver um, right now, but he was probably my favorite of the weekend yeah. because he would do lives and he would be on a, he would be on a bird you know, going down KVB and he's like, Hey, I'm, you know, showing you guys the track like a few days before the event. And we're like, Hey, come see us. We're down here. And we would ask him questions and, yeah. uh, you know, he was excited and, and amped that up. So I would have, you know, loved to maybe, um, talk to them more. We've seen them a lot, a lot of drivers, just of new garden and people walking around, we'd wave, Hey, how are you? But I think maybe given that fan experience and seeing that would be, you know, cool for, you know, our viewers and the public yeah. to see too on the social media side. Right. And, and, you know, the one thing about racing over any other sport is that you do typically have more access to the drivers and they are there for several days ahead of the race where, you know, and now you've got time to think about that to incorporate hey, we need to do some, we need to schedule some Facebook lives or some Instagram stories or whatever we're going to do. And, and that just um, encourages, you know, people to come out. And honestly, even between now and, you know, even when you start to sell the tickets, if you can do some interviews with some of those drivers and, and post them and say, hey, did you know so-and-so lives here, does this and has a dog and and really make those drivers more personal to people. Um, you know, I like Simon Pagino. I like Joseph Newgarden. I like Connor Day. So there's, you know, but I'm just learning about them. And so I'd like to know more about who are they? Where do they come from? What's your family? And those are the kinds of stories that will get people interested in a certain driver. And then they will come out to watch that driver. And so you know, that'll be some things that I know you guys are probably going to want to do or are going to plan to do because it just um, ramps up the energy and the interest in coming to the event. Absolutely. And we had a fan fest on Thursday night on Broadway. 
And so I wanted to kind of make a few tweaks to that too, but we had some, some meet and greet of the driver and Connor was actually there. So that's, I guess, where our stalking started with yeah. him. But we were like, hey, Connor. And, and I think it's because he was just so overly friendly. But you know, like you're saying, you wouldn't know that or expect that. Or fans wouldn't know that if you didn't know him. And yeah. so he was just like, hey, guys, how are you? And and um, that was really cool for our fans to see him be on Broadway. And, and there were so many cars. So we had, um, you know, a stadium truck. We had some of the GT cars. So one of the Lamborghinis was there. Um, some of the indie cars showed up. They had um, a pit challenge contest, which was really cool. So a lot of fans showed up for yeah. that. Um, and that was a free event to the public. Right. Um, and that even helped people that were just there, you know, for whether it was a, a party or a weekend, like, oh, hey, the race is going on this weekend. Maybe uh -huh. we should stop by. So, so that yeah. was fun in, you know, getting that engagement with them there as well. Oh, yeah. And there was a, there was a, of course, several streets were blocked off, but when, when my husband and I were walking back to our hotel, there was an area that overlooked like an overpass and the fans were lined up there all weekend, just watching for free, watching practice, watching qualifying. And that, that spot was busy because I could see it from my hotel room too. And that spot was full of people the whole weekend. And that just shows you that there was a lot of interest and, and there will be for years to come. So I, I'm so, so pleased that this all came together and somebody had the foresight to say, hey, Nashville would be a great place for an indie race. And they put it together and they worked hard and they made it such a huge success. And, and now you can just build off of that and see what happens for next year, right? Absolutely. We're excited and I'm excited to have you come back. All right. Well, for sure, we will be back. There's no doubt about that. And um, yeah, anything else you'd like to share with us, Sasha, before we hang I up? I don't think so. This has been amazing. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. And I'm, I'm glad we could connect and share a little bit about what you did as the social media coordinator for the Big Machine Music City Grand Prix. And will that be the name of it next year as well? It sure will. It okay. sure will. From here going forward. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to get that name. So it rolls right off my tongue because there's a lot of words there. It's <laughs> like international women's motorsports association. It's like, wow, that was a lot of words too. So <laughs> yes, it yeah. is. So Sasha, great talking to you today. I hope you have a great weekend and I know we're going to stay in touch. You too, Melinda. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're looking to buy, sell, or trade the stuff that strokes your engine, anything from truck parts to classic and muscle cars, RVs to hot rods, and everything in between, then check out the official classifieds at RacingJunk.com. RacingJunk.com is the world's number one online racing and performance marketplace, the ultimate one-stop shop where you'll find what you need to rock your ride. If it belongs in your garage, it's for sale on RacingJunk.com. Log in to racingjunk.com to find the gear you're looking for. Sell your extra stuff, keep up on racing news and tech tips, and more. Again, that's racingjunk.com. Thank you for listening to Racing Girls Rock Podcast. Follow us on Facebook at International Women's Motorsports Association or on Instagram and Twitter at the IWMA Nation. And if you know someone that should be on our show, drop us an email at IWMANation at gmail.com.